Today we're going to talk about the 10 skill sets you need to blow up the world. Weapons of massive success. Number one, first skill set you need, this uh, weapon of massive success is courage. Number two, delayed gratification. Number three, the ability to follow instructions. Very, very important. Number four, think service first. Yes, I have them written down so we can stay on track. Number five, because I know I have you impatient people. Number five, understand people where they are, not where you want them to be. Number six, become a highly skilled manager. Number seven, the ability to problem solve. Number eight, bounce back from failure just like that. Kind of like when a quarterback throws a pick six and it's got to go out there on that next series and make it happen. Number nine, Never, ever lose your enthusiasm, no matter what. Number 10, develop unshakable confidence. Now, notice that I didn't give you certain things that you hear all over the place. Uh, the, this list is different. This is very much things that can help you manage many different types of situations, manage many different types of businesses, the, t the weapons of massive success. Now, let's just go back over it because I have people who are just like, and I'm, I'm going to actually use the screen share feature this morning because this is Cranky Hustler Part 2. Chez Taroche, or whatever his name is, or her name, I don't know. An LLC does not need an NN if you're a single member. LLC, LLC is taxed as a sole proprietorship. If it's elected to be taxed as an S Corp or a C Corp, then you need one. Either way, the LLC will provide asset protection. The Internal Revenue Service cannot come after you forever. They have seven years from when they file a tax return for you in question. I've known people who've gone through this. We'll address the first thing. If you do not file a proper pay paperwork for your LLC, it will be taxed an additional 20% self-employment tax. So unless you want to pay 55% on your money, you need a fucking EIN. But see, this is one of the things. And this is why I'm, this is the cranky hustler moment. This is the cranky hustler moment is when you put up comments like this to someone who has not formed one LLC, but about 25 is, is what's the term? What's the term? What, hold on. What is it? What is it? Expose. You ain't made no damn money. Let's go ahead a little further with this. If you have assets and 90 something percent of the people watching this video don't have assets, assets that are paid for. If you have a house that's paid for, you have a car that's paid for, you have millions of dollars in this company that's already set up and you want to do a blind LLC and you want to do this stuff, fine. But if you're trying to grind, if you're climbing that ladder of success, you are following this advice, you'll end up paying 20% more on your money than you have to. Let's go back to number one with the weapons of mass success. Courage. There are many of you who've been around so long, I know your screen names, and literally you've been around for years and you have not started your business. To start that business is, you gotta have courage, you gotta have that belief, you gotta think that this, this is gonna work out. You gotta get started. Uh, there are so many people who will not get started. They will not put it themselves out there. And that's usually a lack of courage, it's not a lack of money, it's not a, a Delayed gratification. One of the things that really hurts a lot of people in online business building or any business building is they got to get paid immediately. They have to make this money immediately. They have to do certain things immediately. And life doesn't work that way. It never has, never will. So when I say something, and let's just go ahead and talk about the never broke action pack. And there's a reason I call it action. If you don't take action, you are going to not go anywhere. You're going out from me to you. If you buy the never broke action pack and don't take action, you wasted your money because nothing's going to happen. If I had j magic jelly beans, I wouldn't be here before you today. I would be in my second or third mansion probably in Scotland. Hey, you ever been to Scotland and Ireland? Pretty green grass. And I would have, you know, that scene from coming to America where, you know, the, the royal penis is being washed. I wouldn't do a damn thing for myself. 
I would have people cut my fingernails, you know, cut the nose hairs, uh, saying that if I had magic jelly beans, there would be no reason for me to be here. And no, I wouldn't share. But I have no magic jelly beans. You, you will have to open up the action pack, start taking action, start doing things. Now, here's the value of delayed gratification. So we're going to stick with this and we're going to blend it up with the action pack. You start now, today. And if you go through the action pack, this time next year, and let me be clear, next year, December 2017, your life will be remarkably better. You will have more money. The money that you have will go further, but it's not going to happen overnight. And this is the big hiccup, big, big hiccup, because like I said, I'm going to do this like 48 Laws of Power style. I'm going to tell you a story of delayed gratification. I was embarking on a marketing program using Craigslist. And my first three months, I failed. But I knew that there was gold in Craigslist. I knew there was. And I kept at it, and I kept at it, and I kept at it. One month, second month, I failed. Third month, I failed. Fourth month, I got success. This was many, many, many years ago. Today, I still use that marketing system that I spent three months on of failing, of not immediate success, of failing, of just looking stupid, making mistakes. Three months. I still use it today. Those three months have turned into years and years of desired results. Three months for years of success. One year for success for the rest of your life. You get the Never Broke Action Pack, you will make thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars off of that information for the rest of your life. That's the power of delayed gratification. Number three, since we're talking about Action Pack, the ability to follow instructions. I will use myself as a bad example of not being able to follow instructions. When you're not stupid and you're on that, let's make it happen, let's make it happen, let's make it happen, that someone could give you a process that will work, but because you're smart and we as human beings tend to overthink stuff, you start putting your own spin on it before you fully absorb the information. There was this podcast that laid out how to sell information products before you made them, you know, and I had to listen to it to 10, to 10 times because I couldn't follow instructions because I was like, ah. but I know myself and I know that's a weakness. So I was like, okay. But instead of saying, you know what, that is not good. They're trying to scam me. I was like, okay, the problem here is you, buddy. You know that you get impatient. So let's relax, breathe, exhale, right? And I listened to it and that was 10 hours. 10 hours of my life listening to it because, because I, I, I was struggling with following instructions because I, I feel that I didn't have to listen to that segment. So after the 10th time and writing it down and putting it together, I put it in action and it worked. Now, if I could follow instructions, you know, from the get go, I wouldn't have to listen to it 10 times. Maybe, maybe not. But typically we as humans, there's so much going on that repetition helps out a lot. So that was me. And I feel that many of you have these similar uh, things. Uberman 2010, what kind of job is good to get to get ready to build a hustling empire? Any job where you have to meet people and sell. Probably the best job ever to prepare you for owning your own business is a 100% co commission sales job. If you can do a 100% commission sales job for two years, you're setting yourself up for success. Think service first. Now we'll use, we'll use D row and and some other people that never broke action pack. Growing up in a single parent household with someone who wasn't really financially astute, that set the stage for a lot of fucked up shit to happen. Wasn't intentional, but it was still fucked up nonetheless. So at an early age, I knew, learned the importance of money and I've learned the, the importance of money management. I've learned the importance of how you have to look at things. So. When I created the Never Broke Action Pack, it was for service because if you only make $40,000 a year, right, with your job, and then you make sure your credit is straight. Uh, this whole thing, I'm not with Dave Ramsey, you need credit. There are many things that happen that you are just upon your 
credit report or some version of it, insurance, so many things. You need good credit. It, it's a must in today's society. The Never Broke Action Pack, if you get it when you're like young, 16, 17, 18, you will have an easier life. You will have a less stressful life. You'll always have money. You'll never be broke. That is an act of service. So when you create products or things that really serve people, you're going to make far more money. What I learned from being a salesperson is relationship building is very important. So someone was asking the question about why their three-part video email thing didn't work and why, you know, because I have run all kinds of email campaigns. I have sent out emails 90 days in a row. I learned that engagement, the relationship is of the utmost importance. I had a list of 450 people deep relationship, high engagement. I did a course, made $300,000. You got people out here with 50,000 person email list struggling to make 100,000 in a year. I made it 300 grand in six weeks. The relationship is very, very important. And relationships are an act of service. Uh, relationships are a time tested in anything that you can think of that if you have good relationships, you will be successful. And the cranky hustler was coming out because purple was like, well, everyone doesn't want a relationship. The thing is, they may not want a relationship with you, but everybody wants a relationship. This I am sure of. And they were going on and like, no, there's plenty of segments and all of this other stuff. And I, I felt the cranky hustler and, you know, the Hulk, the skin was turning green. And I just relax, exhale exhale and i walked away from it in today's news cycle being first being right is more important than being factual uh it, it just is and i, I know this this is what i do this is how i make most of my money this is this is whole thing these streams are an act of service you get to see me you get to interact you throw questions at me i ask them just like that or i say hey, i don't know folks don't, don't do that because they're not about building acts of service so if you think of service first whatever you do you're going to be successful for a long, long time. I'll give you a great example of service. Clark Howard has been making money talking about consumer advocacy, credit, and things for about four decades now. I encountered Clark in the 80s when I was stationed at Fort McPherson. He has been on the 80s, the 90s, 2000s. Yeah, about four decades. He has been doing that longer than he ran his travel service, acts of service will get you so much everything they'll get you money they'll get you friendships they'll get you a husband they'll get you a wife they'll do so many things so acts of service big big thing can make you massive money now understand people where they are let's go back to the Craigslist marketing the reason i struggled was i knew what i wanted and i, I knew what i wanted to get but i didn't understand where people were now, this is the lesson in, you know, this is deep. So, I'm not, I mean, it will take months and weeks and weeks to go into it, but it was copywriting. What I was doing was copywriting. So, the first three months, I learned what didn't work. Notice what I said. You got to talk to yourself a certain way. You, you, the world is going to beat you up. You shouldn't participate in that process. Three months of learning, not how it worked. Then I started asking people. Then I begin to engage differently. I begin to change the copy, the language, the text, and I saw results. And I wrote this one piece of copy that was so effective, people stole it. So that's when I knew I was on a winning trend. Um, where people are is where they are. You can scream like, OK, with the folks who want to argue me about building relationships it was like, well, you don't have to do that. I left it alone. I put out what I could and I realized that their minds were like cement blocks set. And the only way that you were going to change those minds was to pulverize them, take up the remnants, put it back in some mixture and create new blocks. I walked away. It was pointless. So understanding people where they are in two phases like there's some people as uh king foot just said leave them where they are some cases you need to uh some cases you need to understand them better and from a marketing standpoint the more that you understand people 
the more that you understand where they are, the more that you understand their pain, the better off you will be from a profit standpoint. Uh, Sean, I agree with you, Dave Ramsey. He's still traumatized from failures when he was done young. I didn't know that. Uh, yep, building a relationship with the gold guy helped me make uh, make one of the storage unit managers that in turn make help me make one with the storage unit manager. Uh, yo yo clock eBay. <laughs> That's different. How's it going? How do I pay taxes on a large sums of money that I found in the storage rock to shut the deposit? I'm not touching that. You just asked me how do I launder money. I, 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 hey, no, no, no. You go watch the video. What to do when you find a large sum of money? Go watch that. Uh, let's see. <laughs> like that's funny. Zero, true, Sean. Though after a dog chases you and bites you, you get scared and you go tell people, friends, don't walk down the streets. <laughs> Forty power says mirror your enemy, Uberman. The JWB, the Uber one that pays your bills plus a small bit and doesn't take 100% of your time. All right, so understanding where people are because let's take this chance. I had one design, but my messaging attracted a certain group of people. But my messaging said one thing, my products were another thing. And this created confusion and confused people don't buy. So I had to make the channel, the message, and the products all congruent. That's what happens when you understand where people are. 97% of the people who find this channel are struggling, don't have a lot of money. So me hitting people over the head with a $5,000 product will work in a limited capacity. And everything that I've priced on this channel, someone has bought from this channel. But there is every now and then getting this big hit or what I like to do is called base hits. I like making money every day. Some people like the lunch model. I like evergreen, making money every day. It just makes me happy. So that's what happens when you understand people where they are. Now, number six, this one's gonna kind of hurt. Become a highly skilled manager. One of the reasons that so many people find it hard to be successful is they are afraid of managing people. You're not going, I know, you know, this is coming from the internet, dude. You know, I had my business. It was just me for many years. Recently, in the last few years, got help. But I don't run a physical product business. If I ran a physical product business, I would have at least four or five employees. I would because there's so much to do. And once you become a highly skilled manager, Nick Saban has been able to win national, multiple national championships, may win one this year. OC Lane Kiffin's leaving. And I guarantee you, they're going to keep going like they did. Because when Kirby Smart left for Georgia, the defense got better. Why? Because he hired, because this is the thing that I figured out with him. When he hires the first manager, he also hires an understudy because he knows his business. I have someone who's a, a successful OC or a successful DC. I'm going to have him two or three years because someone's going to come offer them more money and more power. More money, more power. That's very seductive. So he is becoming, to me, this is just, I think, is his greatest strength is he knows how to hire and recruit very well. Just to say hire, he knows how to hire very well and he can squeeze every last piece of whatever they is in them where they leave it on the field. That's a highly skilled manager, you know? And I mean, he makes 10 million. The University of Alabama football program does about 100 million a year in a football team. So that's what happens. Now, how do you become a highly skilled manager? By becoming a very poor manager and learning. Hire someone. You know, uh, I have people who want to, you know, like I haven't washed my own car in years. And it isn't because I can't or it isn't because I'm lazy. It's just I have let go a lot of the stuff that I used to take a lot of pride and joy in, like washing my car where it looked like a mirror. And if that's something you like, do it. I'm not saying don't do it. But what I learned is how much time goes into doing stuff. And by becoming the better manager of my time, I made more money. 
So let's just say I have my car washed twice a month, which is usually it because it doesn't, I mean, I don't really drive that much. That's 50 bucks. And for me to wash my car would take me to wash it the way that they wash it. It would take me about an hour. I can make 300 bucks an hour. I can make 500 bucks an hour. Every an hour, I made five grand. So from a financial standpoint, it makes no damn sense for me to wash my car when I can take that same exact time and make enough money to pay for it being washed and have some, a lot of money left over. So from that standpoint, it makes no sense to wash the car. I try to explain this to people. You just bougie, Glenda. You, you, you done lost touch with your roots, man. You done, you done become sedity. You ain't too damn good to wash car, boy. Wash that damn car. Be like a man. And that's tribalism. Tribalism is very powerful in keeping you poor. It really is. Let's see what's in the chat room. <laughs> I think I like these cranky, um, yeah, these cranky hustler moments. Franco, let it go. Let's see. I don't know what Franco is on. Let that shit go, dude. King Flip, you have stopped doing the lawn. I need the time. Sean Osby, and you're very right. Just about the time you get people trained the way you want, they move on. Yeah, I mean, that, that's just it. It just happens. So, but becoming a manager and going through all of those gyrations, going through all of that struggle, you're just going to get better and better. People who hire well make a lot of money. They make a ton of money. This is a consistent consistent thing throughout so many things that you can do. Um, Pasta Jeff Rodriguez, you're not wrong, G. Mr. Bonham 86, wouldn't you have to put the work in yourself to learn you couldn't do it as well, even when growing due to financial reasons? What are you talking about exactly? On that one, Mr. Bonham 86. Brad Loomis, we got a lot of new people in here. Welcome. Uh, I agree on tribalism. I'll tell you something. Uh, I, I didn't mention it, but if you want to be on the list to get early notification on the live streams and special stuff, get to that. This is the only email list that's under the video. I haven't even sent out emails, and other folks are showing up, so this is wonderful. Pasha. <laughs> Your parents, man. Your parents be messing me up. Uh, tribalism is small thinking. That's where I come in. I don't watch cars. I detail them. Cool. Uh, David Tillery, that's a rich mindset, Glenda. Most people don't value time. Time is the only luxury we have because you can't make any more. That's it. You can't make any more. You get older. You don't get younger. You don't stay in the same spot. You get older. King Flip, Gary V says, don't promote A players, only B and C. <laughs> that's called doing your job too well. I just turned 29 and they value my time. Good fellas now. To one of the odds born, as a single mom, when they neglect mom, when I when I neglect mom duties, I'm more successful in other areas that benefit the whole family. Yeah, that's a hard one. That's a hard one. Hit God 727. We have to just, we have just what Bill Gates in the world has time. Use it wisely like parents say. Yeah, I hadn't started out sending emails. So I'll, I'll speak on that really briefly in a minute. Uh, sounds of the cipher. Time is the most valuable commodity. It's limit. Can't be replacing. You don't know how much you have. You could die in the moment. True. And as someone who's experienced death, cl coming close to death, not once but twice. Yeah, it's a scary prospect. <laughs> I'm, I'm not going to mess with you, Peter. Uh, I'll talk about, let's see, what was I going to talk about? It'll come back to me. All right, so we will go with, uh, you know, highly skilled manager. Now, number seven, this is kind of being a manager, and this is looking at marketplaces. The ability to problem solve. Okay, let's go ahead and use this channel. I have a message. Well, let's go way back to a bigger arc. 2009 to 2013, YouTube worked pretty consistent for me. No matter what I did, it pretty much worked the same. 
2013, 14, 15, they, they moved the cheese. You know, they just moved the cheese, right? And I saw it. So what I had to do is problem solve because let's be real. I suck at Twitter. I suck at Instagram. Honestly, I'm not really interesting in unsucking at either one of those things because I like Instagram a little bit more, but for me, and you know, they're very powerful tools and there are people who made millions of dollars using both of them. I just don't like them. So that's the one issue. I said, okay, so you don't like those. You're pretty good at YouTube. So you, you need to move from pretty good to YouTube to great at YouTube, which required me to become a student of the game, required me to spend money talking to people who were much smarter than I am and actually meeting people. I found a problem, then I started working on solutions. The first solution was to put a ton of content up every day. At one point, I was putting up three to five videos a day, seven days a week. That moved the needle a little bit. Then YouTube changed the game again. So I was like, okay, problem solved some again. And I problem solved, problem solved. And I can go ahead and just tell you this. Every platform appreciates engagement. So why, what's going to get me the most engagement in the shortest period of time and what's going to move the needle? Live streams. That's why I sat down and I was like, you know what? I'm not going to put up any more static videos. Uh, I'm going to do nothing but live streams at least five days a week for the next six months. And, uh, you know, I didn't know what was going to happen, but I took an educated guess on how the platform behaves. Because what does the platform want? People to stay on the platform as long as possible. What does the platform want? People with higher session times. What does the platform want? People who are literally engaged. Live streams. So I solved that problem, and the channel is starting to go back to the way it was. So you have got to problem solve in your personal life. You have to problem solve in business. Your customers don't care if you're sick. Your customers don't care if your cat died. Really, they don't even care if your mom died. They'll be sympathetic, and, but a week after she died, it's like, hey, where's my product? You have to look at what problems, and this goes in hand in hand with service, that your customers or a customer base that you want to serve, because you get to pick, what can you solve for them, for real? People who solve problems are never broke. People who solve problems at a high level are millionaires. People who solve problems at a massive level are billionaires. It is problem solving and service. If you can become good at those two things, you're not going to have to worry about fucking Social Security or retirement <laughs> if you can become really good at those two things. Uh, let's see. Peter Thompson, you made also made a huge difference in my life. I've been following you for over four years. Thanks for the long-term viewer. King Flip, I'm always trying to explain to my wife. I don't have time to be wasting doing laundry and cleaning. Woo! See, all right, this, this is another form of tribalism. And it's a, it's a social tribalism because have you ever noticed how a lot of married guys hate the weekends because of the, quote, honey-do list? It's, you, you know, maybe you're married, you have children, and, you know, your wife gets up and, she starts cleaning and then, you know, she's cleaning and there's some things you need to do. Maybe do the roof, clean this. Um, it's a nesting instinct that, you know, we're making our nest nice and it's, it's on a very, very deep level. Now, you're already married, so, but for you entrepreneurs who are not married, get into your entrepreneur game before you get married so that the woman that comes in your life is accustomed to what you do and how you operate because once you are a w-2 type dude and you married a w-2 type woman and she becomes accustomed to that when you start kind of rocking the boat whoo it could be rough because you're changing expectations that were placed when you two got together no one uses twitter don't bother <laughs> i hate twitter alex van gassel that's kind of cool I know you used to pimp that in high school. I'm Van Gassel. Hey, Glenn, I've been watching your videos for a good while. Thanks for all the content. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Um, Punk 877 live stream. King Flip, I've been trying to explain to people about the live streams and they ignore me. It, it, dude, it ain't for them. It just ain't. But I appreciate your efforts. 
King Twitter's were good for me also as a cold column too. Almost no engagement from post though. Tawana, so true. People watch live streams if there's downtime because they engage with the channel owner. Yes. What's up, Rakin? Happy holidays. Sean, two words, maid service. Um, typically, many people, like, like I said, uh, skilled manager, problem solved, we're gonna stop there. We're gonna talk about some of the issues that face entrepreneurs since we're, we're on this thing about massive success. If you're a single guy, you are better off hiring a maid. Now that's gonna sound really crazy to a lot of people because see, this is tribalism. If you were brought up a certain way, um, maybe you had to do chores, it seems silly to pay somebody something that you could do. It seems like a waste of money. But see, here's the thing. We have limited bandwidth when we're awake. The mind is infinite. It never turns off. It's always working. That's why your heart, your lungs, all this stuff, blood pumping. Th these things happen where you, you don't have to think about it because they're automatic. But our conscious mind is very easily disrupted and fatigued. So let's say you know you 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 like your apartment really clean, you like your house really clean, deep cleaning, dust off the fans, and all this other stuff. And it could take you three hours or four hours a week. So that's 12, 15 hours per month as a single person. If you're super, super tidy, if you're a slob, I'm not talking to you. But when you go ahead and you work on your business, you make 300 bucks an hour. So those 15 hours, that's 4,500. I don't know of any maid service that comes in once a week that's $4,500 or a half. I, it may not even be 450 for the month. So when you start to really look at how you operate, what's really important, Bill Gates does not clean his house. Steve Jobs did not. Steve Jobs wore the same sweater and jeans because he didn't want to think about, put thought into what the hell he had to wear. He didn't even want to go to the tag office. He bought new cars. <laughs> it's just crazy. Um, <clears throat> but his time was valuable. So your awake time is very, very valuable. And once you start to understand that, that you know, you become a habit of doing things that increase your time for you to think about your business, work on your business, or spend time with your family. Uh, some people, and this is tribalism again, your weekends were spent cleaning up. And that was kind of like a family bonding activity. So these things are very hard to divorce yourself from because some of them bring good memories. And it's not that they're bad, but if you want to get wealthy, you can't keep doing poor people's shit and get wealthy. You can't. You just can't. It's not going to happen. Uh, Rodriguez, you should make time for those things or make sure you get someone who compliments your vision. W2 White. I mean, it, it's... I could write a book about my dating experiences with women who had regular jobs. It, it was just, you know, it's, so what does he do? Well, he does this thing on the internet. He has a YouTube channel? Yeah, he has a YouTube channel. Girl, you know you're going to start having to support him. I fear that. I fear that. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's crazy. Uh, let's see. Back to mansion. Just left my workers this weekend for the first time. We will look at a few dump trucks. I told them to let the customers move their own cars. I would, um, yeah. I mean, see, you start doing more stuff like that, then you can set up another location. More money, more money, more money. Uh, I have this uh, thing with my kids. I'm going to treat you like an adult. And it's funny when I treat them like an adult, they act that way. It's the strangest thing. <clears throat> Maze, lawn service, I'll save you time. Yep, yep. My best employee wrecked a car. Did I move too fast on trusting him to leave them? Should I fire him? Okay. No, don't fire him. I wouldn't fire him at all. I would say, look, you know, shit happens. You're doing a great job and move on. You said he's your best employee. You do that. He will kill for you. I, I will keep him. 
King Flip, what drugs would you recommend for Max Pro? None. <laughs> None. I would recommend meditation. That's not a drug. I don't I don't do any drugs. Uh, nothing. I know in the future there's going to be these smart drugs and stuff that are coming, but I don't think they're here yet. I could be wrong. Rugged Collins, who we great point. Need someone's top, top stop washing cars, <laughs> washing clothes. Glenn, you're straight to the point. You can't do poor people shit. It's good to know what I'm saying. No, seriously, this isn't what happens is we get into this thing of where certain things are considered elitist if you say them. Poor people shit. Why do people wash clothes at the laundry mat? They don't have a washing machine at home. Why don't they have a washing machine at home? Because they can't afford a washing machine at home. A washer and dryer used is 300 bucks. Um, I got a nice set upstairs. I paid 1300 bucks, but I could have got one that I just want all the bells and whistles. But you can get a really nice washer and dryer set from Best Buy for 600 bucks. So when people do things like that, they don't do them because they want to. They do them because they have to. I don't know of anyone who enjoys um, washing clothes. It's just something you have to do or you walk around stanky. Not stinky, but stanky. And once you start divesting yourself of this stuff, like, you know, your friends will change because the sedity word will come up. Are you too good to do that? That's tribalism because when your people or your friends see you doing certain things, they feel that you are leaving them. You're leaving behind activities. You're not leaving them, but because they take it so personal, they'll leave you. All right, so let's get back to eight. Big one. This kind of fits in. Bounce back from failure. Now, many of you, uh, someone was talking about pathology, and I just said, let it go. I have put out so much shit that didn't work. Didn't work. Okay, next. That's my attitude. I put out my first book that got me into becoming a digital citizen, pure online money, no physical products. It was completely fucked up from an editing standpoint. Okay, we learned don't trust that editor, don't do that anymore. Next. And that's the whole thing. You got to be like this. Wow, that didn't go the way that I want it. Notes. Okay, well, I'll learn. All right, next. <laughs> <laughs> that's kind of, I mean, that's, you got to be moving like that. Because see, what happens is when you fail and then you slow down, you lose so much momentum that for some people who may be pathologically or psychologically disposed to depression, it sets in. And there are some people who just can't recover. But if they would keep moving, they'll recover. But once you stop, and you set and you stew, you become, you know, the scaredy cat. You become like that cat or that dog that if you just go over to pet an adult, don't hurt me. And I've known dogs and cats like that who were not abused. So I'm not talking about abused animals. They were just their natural personality, their propensity toward was toward fear. That's just who they were. But when you stop, it's like uh here, when I put up, you know, all of those videos and it's like, and they changed the algorithm, I woke up the next day and I went to work. I didn't go, let me take a week off. Let me hang out. Let me go commiserate with some people. I was like, okay, it is what it is. Keep working. So you've got to learn how to put those failures, those uh, miscues, those desired outcomes, those bad events behind you with a quickness. Now, I'm not talking about murder or where you did something demonstrably bad. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about it didn't work out the way you want to in business. Move on. That is a huge skill set that a lot of people have never developed. Uh, but, and you could tell by people's language. Man, I ain't never getting married again. Uh, no, nah, man, it ain't going to work for me. Mm, I'm just waiting to do my 20 and get on my Social Security. A lot of people have checked out in life and they're just kind of walking around listlessly, listlessly and wondering why they're not happy. They have given up. They have uh, had a bad outcome somewhere and they've taken the bad outcome that happened 1995 and they brought it right here to 2016. Working in the hospital, I used to talk to a lot of elderly people and you had people 80, 90 years old still 
with pain in their heart from some shit that happened six decades previous. You got to learn how to let shit go. You got to learn how to move on. The big, big skill set. Let's see. Moonlight, just tell them you're an author. <laughs> You've been watching this channel for a long time. Because that was the default thing. Because after trying to explain that, it was just like it's too much work. Uh, to one Osborne, damn, I need to implement this so I can change my son's views. They're 17, 14. I want them to be entrepreneurs. That's a good age to put that in there. Dominic Taylor, you can't keep doing poor people shit if you want to get wealthy. I'm stealing this quote from you. It's it's true. It's true. You when you look at why people do what they do, the truth reveals itself. Momentum is very real. Yep, you gotta be a tank and just push through to the JWB or a virtual input. I realize failure does I realize failure doesn't if you learn from it, then it's a success help keeps you moving. Yep. Cheatable, we love you, Glenda. Never broke us the bomb. Package with the knowledge. Ask yourself, you're the truth. Appreciate that. Keep the ball moving. Lawrence D. Adams. Only crap, I got the email, but my phone alert me. I'm just coming in. <laughs> uh, let's trade those people for some Mexican zombies. You're describing my, Dominic Taylor, you're describing my father perfectly. Um, you know, I've been through a lot. And, you know, one of my friends was just like, you like, would get married again? And I was like, yeah. And he's like, why? And I was like, I haven't given up hope for the future. Uh, many people have. They've been so wounded, so hurt that they cannot bounce back. And it becomes a habit to expect the worst things to happen, to happen versus looking for good things to happen. Because, I mean, when I started this YouTube channel, I was sick. My partner had stage four cancer. I mean, these were not good times. <laughs> These were good times. It was just like, well, it could turn out okay. Let's go for it. That was pretty much my thought process. I, we had shut down the business. I didn't know what the hell I was going to do the rest of my life. This is something I always wanted to do. And I just went for it. And it wasn't pretty. You know, I would say from a health standpoint, some of stuff, everything else was pretty much okay. Um, I had money. And this is why I say health is better than wealth, or your health is your wealth, because I had a lot of money in the bank and I was sick as shit. I mean, you know, uh, Donald Sterling, when he was talking about that stuff with his little side piece, and they was like, oh, Donald Sterling's racist. Nah, he wasn't racist. It was a dick thing. Donald's ass was 70 some years old, impotent, and, you know, all these other ballers are fucking his chick. Got to him. It was like, mm. like, oh, I can't fuck no more. Damn. That's what that was about. <laughs> let's see oh uh, sean they're the walking dead they just don't get buried and make it efficient for 30 years only people that have free time that worry yeah i see some people are busy as shit who worry um which brings me to number nine never lose your enthusiasm enthusiasm is contagious and if you don't believe me and if you got the guts to do this you and a friend go to a bar or a restaurant and just start laughing uncontrollably and note that people around you will start smiling and laughing and they don't know what the fuck's going on. Uh, I had a friend back in the day, we used to do shit like this all the time, uh, back before 9-11 when you can go to the airport. But enthusiasm is a contagious and so is depression. That's why I really don't spend a lot of time around depressed people or folks who are always complaining or folks who are just giving up on life. is it, really, you, and your enthusiasm is for you because you have to have your own internal cheerleader. You have to keep yourself up. You have to manage your emotions because everything is temporary. Except, you know, if you got something that's going to kill you, you know, then boom, it kills you. But everything else is temporary. Hard times, bad sales months, uh, the shit, the, like this thing with YouTube. Uh, there was a time that I was going to, you know, uh, I had a lot of shit happening. And Rakin, who he was around, he knows exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, a lot of it was racist. A lot of it was hate, evil. I didn't have one person attack me. I had a whole angry, nasty, gram, just a bunch of trolls who every day, every day came at me and then I fought back. I started getting channels deleted. 
I started, you know, getting people. I, I got it. So I, I had them so fucking scared because I knew the rules and they couldn't even say my name in the video. So they say my name in the video. And then they're like, well, you know, he, he's a little scared bitch because you say his name, he could play the YouTube. But they stopped saying my name. They stopped fucking with me because I fought back. And I kept my enthusiasm, and then I, I had, you know, the, the enthusiasm is what made me say, I'm, I'm fuck these fuckers. I'm going to stay here. Because when you allow your emotions to take over, it's like, okay, at the time, this was 2012, I think. I don't even remember. That's how far removed I am from it. But I was going to let some fools I didn't know who really didn't matter have me leave a channel that had made me seven figures. Think about that. You have people who will allow the commiseration of other sad people make them leave a good situation. You've had men and women who have left perfectly good mates because their boys and their girls are like, oh, you could do better. And then they tried to do better and for some reason they couldn't. So you've got to keep your enthusiasm high. You've got to get your enthusiasm high because like I said, the world's going to try to beat you up. Your friends are going to try to beat you up. Your family's going to try to beat you up. I'm saying don't join them. Don't join them. Do you? And 10, unshakable confidence. Now, 10 is kind of an agglomeration of one through nine. You do all of this stuff and you get results, people will be telling you you're cocky, uh, you're too much. No, you're just accomplished. You're just accomplished. That's really it. Because you do this stuff, you go through this battle, and you win, you're going to get it. It's going to be a byproduct of doing this stuff. Very, very important. I uh, so needed this today to get back on track. Very cool, Lawrence. Punk 877Z. That's like when people uploaded Princess music and then it disappeared. <laughs> yeah, see, there's a lot of rules here, man. That's why I'm just saying don't hate the player. Don't hate the game. Learn the fucking rules so you can win. There's a lot of rules on YouTube, and a lot of people delve into the rule book, and these fools were breaking rules left and right, and I was just like, Delete it. This channel was terminated for over. I got four turn. I got three channels terminated in like one week, and that's when they started to have their private uh, conclaves about me. Uh, it's one. Someone was in one. And he said, "Dude, they hate you. They they talked about you for two and a half hours." I was like, "Really? Those aren't haters. Those are fans." I have not spent collectively two hours talking about them in five years because they don't matter they don't make me money the stuff they do don't make me money and that's one of the things that you have to parse out for yourself you really do let's see where are we because i try to, oh cool we're right on track here because i try to keep these things at a certain limit okay Anyone else has any questions of the weapons of massive success? The 10 skill sets you need to blow up the world. And notice there isn't like uh, this, ta these aren't tactics. These are different things. These are immutable skill sets that will help you have better relationships, have uh, better a better business, better life. You can apply this stuff to anything. Virtual input. What do you do if you have a business partner who isn't motivated and has a failure mindset set because of past losses? Do you encourage them to go at it alone? I would, you know, this is you. I don't know where you are. I would break up with them. You can't make them become positive. You can be enthusiastic and, and it might be contagious. It may not. Some people are just where they are. Let's see. Hold on a second. Bam. Okay. And I will just move on. I will sit down. It's like and have this uh, written, a written agreement where I would say, look, okay. Things aren't going the way that they should go, and we need to do this. 
and write down some action steps of what you want done, set a timetable of when these things need to happen. And if they can't close the deal, move on. Alex Van Gassel, where do you get new ideas to try when your momentum is starting to slip? Um, man, that's a good question because I have a, I have a book of ideas. Whenever I get an idea, I'll write in this book and some stuff I wrote down years ago that I'm just doing. Typically when I'm slipping or I'm losing momentum, it's because a lot of shit isn't working. So what I'll do is I'll get rid of a bunch of stuff and I'll work on one thing only. Uh, you, you can't stop. You just got to keep pushing through it. Uh, Rodriguez just rewatched the video. This will become, that's why I, I'm going to keep it. I'm not going to let it go for a certain past time. This stream will render and you can watch this as many times as you want. I actually urge you to watch it two or three times. Uh, King flip being unmotivated is tough to return to from return from unless you're motivated, unless you're forced. It can be that way. You know, some tricks that I learned like writing. Um, I had this thing years ago called Passion Friday. And for about a year and a half, I didn't miss a Thursday. I would put it out Thursday. Sometimes it would be unmotivated and be like 1130. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> like a madman. And I learned to produce whether I was motivated or not. I guess I should really be clear on that. A few days this week, you know, I, I've been celebrating way too much holiday season. And there, there's been a few days where I just didn't feel like doing the live stream. And I was like, hmm, I don't feel like it. But I'm going to do it. Y'all didn't even know. And that's when you go from just doing stuff to developing a process. Um, there's a lot of days I don't feel like doing shit. I just make myself do it. It's not that I'm motivated. You know what? That's not true. I am motivated. I know what happens, and this kind of goes back to what King Flint mentioned about losing uh, motivation. I know what happens when momentum, I don't know if someone said momentum is real. These live streams have momentum. So let's just say I start getting janky. Uh, I've put it out Monday through Friday, unless, you know, I can miss one here and there. It's not going to be a good thing. Or if I put out like, I do 10 live streams in the week and I miss a Friday, but I've done two, the rest, I'm gonna, I'll be fine. But if I don't do one in the evening and I start missing morning streams, then it gets kind of flaky and I start to lose momentum. And it's hard to reclaim momentum that you've gained. So that's, I guess, what is motivating me. Owning it, discipline is much greater than motivation. I heard Ilya Hulse say that. It stuck with me. Yeah, because, um, I mean, it's like some writers have this thing about the muse. I can only write when the muse shows up. And I remember I was with this girl we used to date. She was a writer, and she's a brilliant writer, really. And I used to edit her work. and. Yeah, she sees this. She'll be mad. I don't care. Fuck it. Um, one night we were messing around and she was just like, how do you just make yourself right? And then I got up and I grabbed her by the throat and I said, I grabbed that bitch by the throat and make her mine. And she says, I don't know why I'm so horny. <laughs> I was just playing. I found out a lot about her that night. I found out a lot about her that night. You don't know her name, so it'll be all good. But um, yeah, it's discipline. Discipline. Discipline is a very, very big, big thing. Big, big thing. All right, so I'm going to wrap this up in a minute. For those of you who want to never be broke, the Never Broke Action Pack is below. Go ahead and grab that. It's